Shalom, shalom, shabbat shalom um, to all the people of the Most High Yah, to all the children of Israel, to uh, all the people of Yehuda, to all the people who have joined themselves to Christ, who have joined themselves to the body uh, by the blood of Mashiach. And Shabbat shalom to you, a, uh, a welcome to you, a greeting to you, all those uh, who fit that description. Um, just, just thank you once again for joining Restoring the Branch of Ministry on another Shabbat day. Uh, as we get into the Word today, uh, we always say the Word is for those of the children of Israel, the house of Judah, those who have accepted Christ. Uh, but we never want to leave out those who are famished, those who are poor, those who are tired, those who are abused, those who are left behind, um, those who have uh, are stuck in the pits of addiction and drugs, those who are um, incarcerated, um, those who are uh, not right in their mind, uh, the power of the gospel, this word is for you. Uh, this is the word that fishes you out of the water. Uh, Yahshua is the great fisherman. He is the great hunter. He is the great physician. He tells the disciples who've been fishing all day and they can't catch nothing. And he says, hey, throw your net out over there. And he, pulls, and he pulls you in. So this word is for you. And his line will not break. He has a special line. So uh, with that being said, I think we've reached and covered everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, today is Under His Wings Part 2. Uh, we had a special Shabbat. Well, every Shabbat is special. We had something we did last week for the community. Um, so we were not um, YouTube Live last week. Uh, but thanks to all those, some people who, who contributed uh, we had people hands here who was working and contributing and, and doing things and we had some people that uh, from the community came out and then we had people uh, from the social media community the Facebook community reach out and do some donations so um, may, may, may y'all find you blessed um, uh, as we try to uh, uh, do his work um, and part of his work is uh, dealing with people who are might not might not be like you and being be in a totally different situation, live a, a whole different life. Um, and our, our job is to be a lighthouse um, for those who are in darkness. Do not take the candle and put it under the table. Amen. Don't take your candle, put it under a bushel, right. put it on top of the table, put it on the rooftop. Mm -hmm. The things I tell you in silent, mm -hmm. those things preach ye from the rooftop. Okay? Amen. Um, so we have a job to do. So. Uh, but that being said, we're going to had the spoon feed last week. Okay. Had the spoon feed last week. I ain't going to spoon feed today. Okay. Had the spoon feed last week. And that's fine because you got you to gotta try to get it to them the best way you can. Okay. We're going we're gonna to pull out our forks and knives today. Okay. Forks and knives today. All right. And, 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 and we got the sharp knife. So we got to do some cutting. Okay, got to do some cutting today. Okay, so we're going to look at where we were at last, last week. We're going to extend upon this and, and, and keep going. So, all right, so uh, temperament. Temperament, the definition of temperament. Uh, characteristic or habitual inclination or mode of emotional responses. A nervous, is that a nervous temperament, okay? So we're talking about the characteristic or habitual inclination, mm -hmm. okay? We're talking about the definition of, a, of someone in their temperament, okay? Extremely, extremely high sensibility, okay? Especially excessive sensi sensitiv sensitiveness mm -hmm. or irritability, okay? Mm -hmm. So you can be extremely sensitive about something or irritable, okay? So that's the definition of temperament, or at least based by Miriam and Webster, or Miriam Webster, is that one person? Yeah. Miriam Webster, yeah. I said Miriam and Webster, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Love of Elohim. The love of Elohim. We have to have a, a, a deeper understanding of the love of Elohim. Mm -hmm. um, the more we can understand how Yah loves this great love, we have a, a, a understanding of that. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, this is going to help us love who? Our neighbor. Yeah. As who? Yourself. Mm -hmm. hmm? It's hard for people to love others when you only love yourself. Huh? You don't think enough of yourself. We got people that think too high of themselves. Mm -hmm. Huh? And then we got people that think so low of themselves. I think so high of myself to fool, fool it with you. Mm -hmm. Fool it with you. I wouldn't urinate on you if you was on fire. Wow. Huh? Think so high of myself and you so low. Then you got some people that's so low. They so low on they so low on they self. How they gonna love somebody else? Hmm? That's what the lies have done. Talk about that in class this morning. The depth of the lies. Genesis 1 and 2. Now the earth was unformed and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. Okay? Um, and that hovered, okay, if we look in the bottom, if we look at, if we start at, um, let's just read all of it. Okay, in Hebrew, okay, we just had class today. All right, so, Vehaeretz, right? Haita, Tohu, Vavohu. Bahochoshef al pene to te te home va ruach Elohim ma re ma mar ma sorry mahra kafet mahra kafet al pene hamim right hamayim hamayim okay so we look at what we have va ruach okay we know that 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 is the what. Spirit. So we see, and, and the spirit. So mm -hmm. and the spirit, the spirit of Elohim. Okay, did what? Mahra, mahra, chafet. It hovered over the face, all pane, all upon, over, all, upon, or over the face of the hamayim, the waters. Okay, so we need to look and see what hovered is. Now. Um, and I spelled that wrong, so don't laugh. All right, and the, this is what we have at the top. All right, we have um, Mara Chafet, right? Mara Chafet, um, or Mara Chafet, um, and that is hovered, right? The Hebrew English Bible is called, defines it as hovered. Now, that word, that, that crux word, I got it there for you, right? As we see, it's Rakaf. Rakaf. Now, if we look at it up here, right, we see this what? What is that? Okay. What is that? Fe. Okay. Fe. Okay. okay. So when we look at it, and then and, and the other one we see it's in its final form. Mm -hmm. Okay, we see that? All right, it's in its final form. So we have the Rakaf, right? And the King James Version in, in Genesis 1 and 2, it'll say moved. Mm -hmm. Okay, the spirit of God or spirit of Elohim moved upon the face of the waters. Okay, rakaf. All right, now this word means to grow soft, relax, to be moved, i.e., affected. An affection, a feeling, a tender love or cherish. Okay, so the way the ruach hovered above the face of the waters. It moved in affection. Love is involved. Okay? We see that? All right. Uh, sorry. All right, so um, we're going to look at rakaf now. So rakaf means to grow, soft, relax, to be moved, i.e. affected, tender, love, cherish. All right, now um, we'll look at the same word. This word is only used three times in your Tanakh, okay? One time in Genesis 1 is used again in uh, the book of Jeremiah. Don't quote me on chapter and verse. And we're going to look at it in Deuteronomy 32. So let's turn Deuteronomy 32 together.
Deuteronomy 32. If we remember, we're going to start in verse 9, but the previous verse is 8. Okay? Remember we talked about during Sukkot, okay, that when the Most High divided the nations, uh, to nation, the inheritance, when he separated these sons of Adam, is what it says. Okay? But we know in the Septuagint, it's, it says the sons of Ruth, sons of Elohim. Remember, we talked about that during the feast, right? So the sons of Elohim is making a reference to the Malachim or the angels, okay? And he set the bounds according to the, to, the, to the people, according to the number of the children of Israel. So when you get to verse 9, it says, For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. So uh, Yah put his claim on the people of Israel. That's his people. Okay, Jacob is a lot of their inheritance. Verse 10, he found them in a desert land and in a waste howling wilderness. He led him about, he instructed him, he kept him as the apple of his eye. Okay, you see that? He kept him as the apple of his eye. Verse 11, as an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young. Fluttereth over her young. Guess what fluttereth is in Hebrew? Rakaf. Fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings. So the eagle is over the over the nest, over the babies, spreading her wings. He says he taketh them, beareth them on her wings, so the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. Okay, um, so the Song of Moses in 32, they're giving us an overview of Israel and particularly Jacob and in his wandering um, and how he was the apple of his eye. So a lot of times, you know, uh, you know, well, some people, you know, man, Israel, Jacob, singular, Jacob, for what Jacob did, okay? Um, but anyway, so he instructed him came as the apple of his eye. And then this comparison of Yah being over Jacob or protecting Jacob is like an eagle spreading out the wings over the nest, fluttering her, fluttering her wings. Mm -hmm. That's the example given. That same word is used in Genesis 1 and 2. So in Genesis 1 and 2, the way the Ruach hovers, the way the Vahruach Elohim Mahra Kefet Al Pene Hamayim, the way that is described in Genesis 1 and 2 is the exact same thing in Deuteronomy 32 and 11. And it's not used anywhere else except in um, Jeremiah. It's just talking about destruction falling on top of somebody's head. Uh, that's the only time this word Rechav is used. So it is, is, is deep. Deep love, deep care. You know, the picture is a, is a mama eagle flying over his nest. Now, you be the dummy to go up there and try to take one of them eagle eggs. Go up there and try to take that. And you got that eagle flying over her nest. Yeah. Them claws. And that. King! King! I don't know that. King! I'm going to come down with claws and be all up in your talons and stuff. Going to beat you to death. Beat your eyeballs out. We're going to walk around blind. Okay. So this is this is the description of Yah over the face of the waters and the description of Yah and his protection over Jacob and especially when it comes to the portion, the inheritance. Everything was divided amongst the sons of Elohim or the angels as we see that in the Septuagint in Deuteronomy 32 and 8. It's changed for whatever reason. Well, we, could, we could speculate. Uh, so when it comes to Israel and Yah, so it says, verse 12, there was no strange God with him. Jacob carried no strange God. Um, so we're looking at this because we're looking at this love. This is a deep love, deep, 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 deep love. And the picture is Genesis 1 and 2 and Deuteronomy 32 as a 
bird or a, a big eagle, wings spread abroad over her babies. Okay? So with that being said, oops, the temperament of Yahshua as explained by the scripture. The temperament. Okay, and we just gave we gave an example here of the temperament, um, uh, the characteristic or habitual inclination, right? The characteristic of Yahshua, right? Extremely high sensibility, right? Excessive sensitive, sensi sensitiveness or irritability, okay, being very irritable, all right? So we're going to look at the temperament of Yahshua explained by the scriptures, okay? Luke 19. Luke 19. Luke 19, we in verse uh, 39. Hallelujah, you never get there. Luke 19 and 39. All right, it reads, And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. He said, he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. Mm -hmm. Verse 41. And when he was come near... He beheld the city and wept over it. Mm -hmm. Wept mean crying, don't mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bewailing, crying, hard crying. But the temperament of Yahshua. So we had to look at what that meant, right? Mm -hmm. Excessive and being sensitive. Very sensitive. So the Pharisees just say, hey, man, tell your disciples to chill. He said, man, I tell you what, if they should hold their peace, the stones will cry. Mm. That dialogue ends, mm. making a way to the city. Mm. He start crying. He's crying over the city. Okay. Saying, if thou had known, even thou at last, at least in this day, the things which belong unto thy peace. Mm. But now they are hid from thine eyes, for the day shall come upon thee, that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee round, and keep thee in on every side. And they shall lay even with thee the ground, and thy children within thee. They shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. And he went, and he went, and he went into the temple, and began to cast out them that sold therein, and them that brought. Now, we know another uh, pastor of the Gospels, he right up a whip, didn't he? Mm -hmm. So what was the temperament of Yahshua again? The temperament it meant to be very sensitive or easily irritated. Mm. That's how Miriam and Webster, I mean, where Miriam and Webster broke it down. Hmm? So we're looking at the temperament of Yahshua. We gotta, we understand that Yahshua make it clear that I'm by my Whose business? Father. Father's business. So how he is, I am. Mm -hmm. You won't believe this, but Genesis 1 and 2, the Ruach, what, what was the word? It was marachafet, over the waters. The same way a mama eagle would be over her babies. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Once again, you go up there and try to take that baby e e ba ba egg you want to. You go up there and try to get you an egg and try to take it to the zoo. And see what happens. Them talents gonna tear your eyes out, make you fall off the cliff. So now we have Yahshua coming in, goes into the temple, he casts them out, those that sold, them that bought, saying unto them, It is written, My house is the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Okay? That was uh, Luke 19. So we wanted to look at the emotion or the temperament. Of Yahshua. Mm. Okay? Matthew 
Matthew 21, verse 1. Matthew 21, verse 1. When they drew nigh to Jerusalem and were uh, come to Beth Bethpage, to the Mount of Olives, then sent Yahshua to disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway you shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. If any man say aught unto you, you say the Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sing upon an ass, and a fault of a colt, and the colt of the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Yahshua commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put them their clothes, and set him thereon. A very great multitude spread their garments in the way, Others cut down branches from the trees and strode them in the way. And the multitudes that were before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Right? Baruch Hashem uh, B'Shem Adonai. Baruch Abba B'Shem Adonai. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Yahshua, the prophet of Nazareth, of Galilee. And Yahshua went into the temple. He went to the temple of Elohim and cast all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of money and the seats of them that sold doves. And he said to him, It is written that my house shall be called the house of prayer, but you made a den of thieves. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. Okay? So now we're just getting a little bit more um, details of this scenario. Okay. Now, verse 17, same chapter. And he left them and went out of the city into Bethany and he lodged them. We asked this last week. What happened in Bethany? Because Bethany's not that far from Jerusalem and something happened in Bethany. What happened in Bethany? Something big happened. Powerful. For people who did not believe after what happened in Bethany, they believed after that. What happened? Lazarus. Lazarus. That happened in Bethany. So now, the book tells us that Yahshua is coming into Jerusalem, going out of Jerusalem. It's kind of back and forth from Jerusalem to Bethany. Okay? Going into the temple. Remember in John when he was arrested, he said, I was in the temple daily teaching among you. You had no problem when you try to arrest me or nothing. Okay, so we see that he's going back and forth from the little town to the big city. Back and forth and going into the temple. Okay. Um, so we're not going to read all, but, but in 21 and 22, he's going back and forth between uh, Bethany and Jerusalem and there's also dialogue with the Pharisees. A lot of a lot of a lot of dialogue, right? Well, if you're this, what about this? What about so there's, so there's dialogue and traveling between Bethany or the small towns and Jerusalem, and he's going into the temple. Okay. So look at the mentality of Mashiach. The mentality of Mashiach. You understand the mentality the mentality of Mashiach. We gotta understand his focus. Okay, brother, can you give me 1 John 4.19? 1 John 4.19. Got to understand his focus. Sometimes it's hard for us to focus. But having a mind like Mashiach, being like him, you must be able to what? Focus. Okay. Amen. Hmm? We love him because he first loved us. We do what now? We love him. We love him. Now, why do we love him again? Because first he first loved, loved us. us. The book said he first loved us. Amen. I wonder when did he first loved us. Mm. Oh, Genesis 1 uh, and 2. Oh, the way he hovered over the waters. Mm -hmm. He hovered over the waters. And our Hebrew teaches us, shows us, that him hovering over the water is the same way a mama eagle fluttereth her wings over a nest. Take one of them eggs you want to. Come up, to, come up here and do something. Try something. I ain't lost none. 
Read it one more time, sir. We love him. We love him. Because he first loved us. Because he first loved us. Mm -hmm. So the things that we say, things that we profess, uh, 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 the walk, it is because he already initiated the relationship. Amen. When? How, 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 how far back? How, how far? Let's, at least Genesis 1, 2. Really before that. We ain't going to go there. Because the book is pretty clear that he had some things going on about you before there was a formation of the world. Mm. Hmm? So in Genesis 1 and 2, there was hovering over the water. That same hovering is where a mother eagle fluttereth over her babies. Remember the objectives. The four I wills of Yah. I will be your Elohim. Exodus chapter 6. Right? I will dwell with you. Exodus 29. I will dwell with you. I will walk with you. Leviticus 26. Right? I will be in you and you will be in me. John 14, 20. The four I wills of Yah. So we have to understand that if we know this, then we know what's on Mashiach's mind. Mm -hmm. We know what's on his mind. And we can now, we can get the, get the temperament as he's going into the city. Mm. Breaking down crime. Because you knew not the time of your visitation. Mm -hmm. Then not what the book said. But in the same verse, uh, two or three verses later, you're chewing somebody out. Mm. Don't whipped up a whip. Get out of my father. It's supposed to be a place of prayer. You made a place of jackals and thieves. So I wanted to go through that so that we can understand this more. Matthew 23, I got it up on the board for you. Matthew 23, 37 to 30. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. So now we know that in Matthew 21 or uh, uh, Luke 19, he's going back and forth from where? Bethany. Bethany, to just, back, just back and forth. Okay. So I'm back in Jerusalem, back in Matthew 23. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stone of them, which are sent unto thee, how oft would I have gathered thy children together? How would you have gathered them, great master? Even as a hen gathereth her chickens. Where, master? Under her wings. He said, man, I come in the volume of the book. I come in the volume of the book. Where are you going to turn the book? And it's not, it's not talking about me. Where are you going to turn the book and, 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 and you can't find him? Hmm? Where are you going to turn to? Even as a hen gathers her chickens under her wings. But you know what the problem is? You didn't want to come up under the wings. You didn't want to. You don't believe what he said after. He said, behold, your house is left until you desolate. Now, what would we learn today in class? What was the Hebrew word for lies again? Anybody Remember? Kazav, right? When we had the picture, the, 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 and what was the, the example? The, the, the palms, the palm of the hand holding the weapon and damaging the house. Mm -hmm. But if we look a little bit deeper, you are the house. Mm -hmm. Because we just read it a second ago. They said, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he said, look, if they be quiet, the stones will shout. On down, on down the line, some stones was going to pop up out the earth. I forgot what if it was in uh, Esdras. We talked about in every era, every generation, the righteous people being sown in at a particular time. He said, man, he said, look, the stones will cry out if these people hold their peace. He said, your house is left until you desolate. And lies can destroy a house. Okay? Lies can destroy a house. Lies can get us destroyed. Amen. Right? Because you are a house. Mm -hmm. You are a house. Okay? 2 Thessalonians. Now we beseech you, brother, by the coming of our Lord, and by our gathering together, our gathering together, our gathering together. He's going, he, he is a gathering.
gather us unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in what? Mind. Mm -hmm. Or troubled neither by what? Spirit. Mm -hmm. Nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. So there is a great gathering together unto him so that you should not be so soon shaken in your mind. But if my mind is full of lies, if my mind is full of doubt, if my mind is full of whatever, then I'm troubled in my spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, turn to 1 Thessalonians. Can't put everything up, right? You know, if I put everything up, y'all are gonna get spoiled. And we like Jackson the cat, spoiled. <laughs> cat was born spoiled. Touch me, rub me, love me. Mm -hmm. Have you done? Have you killed anything? First Thessalonians, fifth chapter. Be in verse one. So understand, brothers and sisters, that we've been so. So this is how this, this is how they were writing back in the day. So just look back, look back at the screen before before we read First Thessalonians. Mm -hmm. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Master mm -hmm. Yahshua Hamashiach, and by our gathering together unto Him. It's like He coming, He coming, He coming. He's scooping everybody up. 1 Thessalonians 5, but of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so come as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. Let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord, Yahshua HaMashiach who died for us, whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even, also, even as also ye do. All right, so we've got to be edifying, comforting and edifying. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the master and admonish you. And to esteem them very, very highly in love for their work's sake. And be at peace among yourselves. Mm -hmm. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. Mm -hmm. Comfort the feeble-minded. Mm -hmm. Support the weak. Mm -hmm. And be patient towards all mm -hmm. men. Mm -hmm. So we are replicating the love of Mashiach. Mm -hmm. Because he said, I come into Jerusalem. And how I would love to gather you unto me. And I'll protect you. I'll have you under my wings. Right, we're supposed to be a small figure of that to all those in our, in our realm. And we've talked about it before, about the measure given. Mm -hmm. We talked about there was a measure of faith, a measure of uh, grace, right? a measure of rule mm -hmm. given. right? That, that raw in your hand, that circumference, that is your area. To do a mighty work. That's the measure given unto you. What is that staff for? Mm -hmm. Right? What is the lamed for? It's right, it's supposed to pull people in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Right? It's on the screen and by our gathering together unto him. Mm -hmm. But if he's dwelling in you, mm -hmm. then you're representing him. Yes, yes. Because if he's in you and he's in the Father, then you are a small fit, then you're a little small house. You're a little small house. You're a small house. And they should be able to come to you and get shelter, comfort, edification, support. 
relief. Because mm. people are shaken in their mind. Mm. People are troubled at, in the spirit. People are deceived. Some people don't want the ways of the world. They just don't know nothing else. i say it again. Mm. Some people do not want the ways of the world. They just don't know nothing else. And here you are, you got a, 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 a you got some 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 sensitive lights. You know how you got them them lights when somebody come in your yard yard and lights pop on, right? Motion, motion lights. Thank you. They pick up your motion. Some of our lights is, is backwards. Somebody come, we don't run around. We turn we turn turn the mugs off. It's always Halloween around your house. That's what we do when it's Halloween time. Turn all our lights off. Don't you come over knocking at my door? But when it comes to people who are out there who don't want it, mm. I should be like some of these Sunday people. Bird box message. When they <laughs> they got the, they can't see, but they come to your door and they're knocking on it. You gotta let them in. There's people doing that though. Having sermons and messages off bird box. Y'all be shaming yourself. Anyway. But we are little houses, little sanctuaries, little temples. Shining out the light of Christ. And they see the light. There's going to be some. I don't know who. I don't know how many. They're going to be drawn to the light. Because not everybody in the world wants to be there. Mm. And you don't know who's who. So take your glasses off. And get, get you, clean your contacts. I, always, I, I can read. I can see. Huh? You don't know. You don't know. Got to be ready to work, ready to help, ready to serve. Time will prove all things. Mm. Time will prove all things. Yes, it will. Mm. Now you 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 get you get you get a you get a random phone call. Somebody suicidal. Mm. You invite them over, mm. cook for them. You you know what? You don't see them no more. Time will prove all things. Time will prove all things. And all you can do is have that have that open invitation there. That's all you can do. We finished first Thessalonians. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. Be at verse 13. Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6 chapter. Be in verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong. Right? You got to be strong. Because there's going to be some people out there that's what? Weak. Right? He just said to support the weak. The feeble-minded. Right? Be patient towards all men. So you got to be strong to be able to do that. You know, it takes work trying to be strong all the time, don't it? For people that work. I mean, right? What's that phrase? Carrying dead weight? Mm -hmm. Huh? That's hard. That's why I say you got to be strong. And how are you going to be strong? Be strong in the Lord. Yes, sir. And look, in the power of your might. In the power of your might. Mm -mm. That, ain't, that, ain't, that ain't what it says. Uh -oh. In the power of his might. Hallelujah. You, ain't got, you ain't got nothing. No. Man, I just went to the dollar store. I got a, a 10 batteries. And they were double A energizer. I mean, there was a Dollar General brand, but still they look like energizers. You ain't got no power, man. You ain't got no power. So finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So like, man, look, he rose. He was like, look, he got, he, and in Revelation, he said, man, I got all power, all authority. All things been given into me. And I'm supposed to be toting him I'm supposed to be a place that he can dwell in. Mm -hmm. This is how you be strong. Put on the whole armor of God. You may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You know what's in wiles? Lies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Take away the W and you got lies. Okay? He ain't rolling up on nobody. Smacking the soul. Huh? He ain't got that authority. Smack the soul up out of you. Because if he could... Right? There wouldn't be no humans left. Yeah. If he had that authority. Mm -hmm. He got to deceive people. Mm -hmm. 
do my dirty work for me. I'm going to pimp you. There's a pimp right there. Mm -hmm. hmm? Got all kind of little holes and stuff running around this whole planet. Working for him. Selling they stuff. Mm. To the highest bill. Mm. I pay you real good. I take care of you. Anyway. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's so why you got to grow in the word. Mm -hmm. So when we grow in the word, we can fight spiritually. Mm -hmm. hmm? We can fight spiritually. So we got to grow in the word. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of Elohim, that you may be able to stand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. And having done all to stand. Now hold your finger right there. Look on the screen. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 4. We just read it. But ye brethren are not in darkness. Amen. That that day should overtake you as a thief. You shouldn't be knocked off your block. Mm -hmm. Hmm? The rug should not be pulled from under you. Your tires should not go flat. But ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. So back in, in Ephesians 6 and 13, Wherefore take unto you all the whole armor of Elohim, that you may be able to withstand then that evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know we got some women in here. You got to stand up like a man. It's all right. Hmm? Ten toes. I got, I got, I got ten toes down. Ten toes down. And have it on the breath, breast plate of righteousness. Okay. Y'all, y'all will dress you. Okay. Ain't no outfits. Ain't no clothes. You can. Ain't nothing you can put on will make you look as good as y'all can dress you up. You gotta want you got you look you you you, you gotta want to be measured by him mm, yeah. to have your attire tailored, yeah. tailored specifically mm. for you. That's gonna help you stand. Hallelujah. Right, we all right need better clothes. Amen. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and preach that. We all need better clothes. Yes, sir. <laughs> I, I like them. I like them. I like them pants. Yeah, but they ain't good as what y'all got though. I just got to get myself to the warehouse. Get strapped up. Hmm? That's doing all you can. You look throughout the scriptures, only one thing they want from you. What's that, bomb? Your best? Mm -hmm. Ain't too much to ask. If that's one thing about mind conditioning. Most of us have been conditioned. Hey, if you go to a job, you, don't, you ain't doing good on your job. I'm going to fire you behind you. I'm going to fire you behind. You got to go. Mm -hmm. You ain't doing the best you can do. You got to go. Mm -hmm. Man, that, that's real simple. Hmm? You in school? You got to do grades and you got to... You don't turn in your homework. Every time it's a quiz, you had to look like, oh, I didn't know we had a quiz today. You don't hear me say that three times we had a quiz yesterday and you come here today. Then it's time to get your report card. You know what you got? You got F's. How do why I get all these F's? I ain't do my best. That's real simple. I did not do my best. That's just life. I use a sportsman. I love Mike Tom. I love the Steelers. They ain't make the playoffs. You know why they make the playoffs? You didn't do your best. That's right. Your record is what you are. But we live in there, well, you know, the referee. A lot of my parents say about, about their kid. I just have to, I just, I, I just got to walk off. Huh. Referee, that old coach. Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, sure. I, I, absolutely. Not doing the best you can. That's just life. Whatever facet. Then you're going to all, now all of a sudden, the one who holds the keys to life. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna stand in front of him. Mm -hmm. Right. Half heart, half effort, half ragged. 
half nasty. Because half of you now, you know, you just, you just half. Everything about you is a half. Mm. Then I'm going to expect to, I'm just, I'm expect to be, be right with him. Like, are, are you conscious? Verse 15, and your feet shall with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all take in the shield of faith for which you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of Elohim. So I got to get word in you. Okay? If your teacher fought the adversary one-on-one, -on -one, solo fight, mm -hmm. but you know, the adversary, he, if that is the son of Elohim, mm -hmm. I'm going to wait till he looks tired. Wait till they're hungry. I ain't gonna roll on them straight up. Because yep. every time, you know, and we talk about this during the feast, the response of the different entities, how they responded to him, right? And when they was in different areas that were outside of maybe Israel's borders, it was like, whoa, son of the most high. Mm. The elite one, the son of the elite one. So if he's going to go at Yahshua after fasting for 40 days in the wilderness, mm. this should sound familiar to us because Israel was in the wilderness for 40 days. For, I mean, 40 years, excuse me. It should have just been 40 days. <laughs> Could have been. So what do you think about you? But you ain't, we, ain't, we ain't got enough word in us. Mm. Mm. Why? We, get, we get the appetizer. You know we say, man, I'm full. I'm good, man. Appetite was good, man. It's a full, full course meal. You're not done. Mm. You're not done eating this bread. Mm. Hey, me at the Lord's table, and all you, all you want is appetizer. Mm. You gonna you gonna you gonna disrespect that man like that? Mm. I got all the stuff you to eat. You ain't gonna eat. Mm. Hmm. That's how our elders would be like. You come in somebody's house, they offer you something to eat. Right? Mm -hmm. And then you, you know, you, you're not going to eat this food? Mm -hmm. You're not going to eat? That's, just, that's disrespectful. We won't believe about this book. It's a lot of good food up in here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know what some of us do? Mm -hmm. I had, oh, man, the appetizer was so good. Them some of the best wings I had. I'm, I'm, I'm straight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you don't want nothing else? Mm -hmm. You don't want nothing else. Son, hand me that paper to fail. Just duck down. Just duck down. Just start crawling up. <laughs> and just walk around that way, bro. That, that's how we are. We don't want to. We don't want to eat. Thank you, sir. So we need that. We need the word in us, okay, so that we can uh, con contend with this spiritual wickedness all around us. Mm -hmm. Right? There's some things about ourselves we just don't know. Mm -hmm. Generations. And generations of lawlessness mm. and the iniquities of the fathers and we don't know when the last time someone in my family or your family or your family or your family or anybody watching family that brought blessing to the family line by keeping the commandments because mm. if you keep the commandments there's a life to that there's a blessing for that but then when you don't do it there's no consequences so there's just Lines and years and years and generations of just not doing, not doing it. And here you are, being a wall, keeping the avalanche of iniquity fall. That's why the book says you got to be strong. You got to be really strong. You got to be strong in some of these other people before us. Right? Because knowledge has ran buck wide open. Right? Mm -hmm. What can you not do on your phone? What can you not do? What can you not do? Where can you not go? <clears throat> it's the world we live in, baby. We're in the fight of our life. We're in the fight of our life. And the and the ones that went before us, that 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 Hebrew hall, that he Hebrew faith hall of fame, they ruined the song. They want you to do it. Because somebody got to carry the baton. Y'all said, man, I got people in every era. 
we have a great opportunity right, to carry that, to, to, to continue doing that. We have to grow in the word. Right? We've got to grow in the word. Okay. Verse 19, always praying with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there too with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me that I may uh, open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Okay. Um, Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians, uh, fifth chapter. Verse one. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of Elohim, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. Okay. We're going to be dressed up in some different, some better. Got some better for you. Okay. If so, that being clothed, we should not be found naked. Mm -hmm. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened. So how many of us have heard or remember the verse or the passage about all of creation moans? Mm -hmm. So you know what you are? You're part of creation. creation. So your body moaning, mm -hmm. the earth is moaning, mm -hmm. the galaxy, the stars, the everything's moaning mm -hmm. and groaning. Waiting for the great doctor mm -hmm. to come. If you have ever been with your wife, mm -hmm. giving a baby, and when she gets them, cur them contractions, and it's you, and the nurse, but in your mind, where is the doctor? Mm -hmm. Why ain't he here? She yelling, she hollering, she breathing, we pushing the nurse, the man, but where is the doctor? And all of a sudden, mm. the doctor comes. Mm -hmm. And all of creation mm. is in a contraction state. Mm. Your body, the earth, the heavens, the doctor coming. <laughs> he coming, baby. Some things got to be delivered or changed. Some things got to be delivered. Got to be some uh, some re some some uh, reconcile some some reconciliation mm -hmm. going on. Okay, and this ain't no Doctor Doolittle. <laughs> all right, and Aiden Murphy coming in talking to animals and people and all. No, 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 no. The great physician. <clears throat> First four, for we in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened not for that we should would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given us to be earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. Right? Once again, we said this last week, y'all are sitting at the funerals. But in this previous chapter, he just said that there's another body waiting on you up in Shammai. Hello? Mm -hmm. Isn't that what the book said? Is that not what Yahshua taught? And then with Peter said, I got to take off this tabernacle as the Lord showed me. We walk by faith, not by sight. Because you ain't seen your body. You ain't seen what your new temple or tabernacle look like. Mm. But you know it's there, mm. if you believe. Mm -hmm. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. For, for we labor that which present or absent we may be accepted of him. So whether or not I got it or not, I got to grind. Mm. I got to be strapped up in this armor. I got to have this word in me so I can go forth. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your conscience. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, 
that ye may have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance and not in heart. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God, or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we are all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto Amen. him which died for them yeah. and rose again. Amen. Which henceforth know we, no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Okay. Verse 18. And all things are of Elohim, who hath done what? Reconciled us to who? Himself. Himself. Hmm? We see that. All things are of God. Who hath reconciled us to himself by Yahshua HaMashiach. And hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Amen. So if they got it, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. right? That's why when Yahshua talk about spreading his wings, we're supposed to be doing what? Spreading our wings. Because once again, there are people in the world who really don't want the world. But all they know is the world. That's all they know. And at one point, you won't believe this. But if you had the guts to look in the mirror, all you knew was the world. Hallelujah. No, and I'm, I ain't pointing at you, sister. I'm pointing at the camera. I ain't wanna, I'm pointing at the camera. She's like, man, you have the guts. Okay, this is the camera, camera. But we all, we all, that's all we knew. And then once we start walking this way, you know what? We hadn't forgot the world. No. No. That's why the book says to be strong in the Lord and in his power. What kind of power he got? I don't know. I think they just talked about him being risen from the dead. All power. All power. Hallelujah. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. Mm -hmm. Okay, remember the world, creation, people, everybody's groaning. Mm -hmm. And y'all like, don't worry, I'm going to fix it. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna believe it. Mm -hmm. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. Mm -hmm. Not imputing. Thank Somebody you. give me Romans 15 and 3 right quick, please. Romans 15 and 3. Go ahead, Aaron. 15 and 3, Romans. We just read 2 Corinthians in 19, the second half. He said that he reconciled the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. Romans 15 and 3. Romans 15 and 3. Mm -hmm. For even the Messiah did not please himself. Mm. But as it has been written, uh -huh. the reproaches of those who reproached you fell uh -huh. upon me. And as it was written, it said what? The reproaches of those who reproached you mm. fell upon me. Mm. Yeah. So the reproaches, so 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 those that reproached or transgressed him, mm -hmm. it is written that the, the reproaching or the transgressing fell on him. Mm -hmm. So in 2 Corinthians. Reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. Mm. I guess because, one more time, brother, read it again. For even the Messiah did not please himself. Uh -huh. But as it has been written, uh -huh. the reproaches of those who reproached him yes. fell upon me. Fell upon who? Me. Fell on the Messiah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Fell upon the Messiah. So in this reconciling, this great plan, this bigger picture, the bigger picture that in this gathering unto him, 2 Thessalonians, this gathering unto him, be not so uh, soon shaken, brethren. Mm. By the gathering unto him. So you got to have your mind focused. On being gathered to right? Yeah. Understanding the four I wills of Yah. Yes, sir. 
I will what? Be your Elohim, Exodus 6. Well, hmm? mm -hmm. That I will dwell with you, mm -hmm. Exodus 29. That I will walk with you, Leviticus 26. And then in John 14, I will be in you and you will be. I, this will happen. So it is reconciling unto himself that the trespasses, the trend, I will not impute those onto you. Because they fail. One more time, brother. Romans 15 and 3. For even the Messiah did not please himself. Yes. But as it has been written, uh -huh. the reproaches of those who yes. reproached you yes. fell upon me. Fell on him. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Verse 20, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. Mm -hmm. As though God did beseech you by us. Mm -hmm. Hmm? God did beseech you by us. Romans, uh, no, I'm sorry, John 6 and 44. John 6 and 44, brother. No one is able to come to me uh -huh. unless the Father who sent me draws him. Mm. And I shall raise him up in the last day. Mm. So, mm. ain't nothing happening unless he sent you. Mm -hmm. And he is the same one that rose him. Mm -hmm. So in verse 20, now that we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ st instead, or steed, stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Are you hearing this? Mm -hmm. Romans 15 and 3. One more time. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of Elohim in him. Go ahead, brother. For even the Messiah did not please himself. Right. But as it has been written, as it was written, the reproaches of those who mm -hmm. reproached you yes. fell upon me. Mm. And we know that f f the next verse, for whatever was written before was written for our instruction, uh. that though that through endurance and encouragement of the scriptures have we mercy. might have ex the expectation. Oh, have mercy. Woo. So he, got, he had this thing planned out. He had this thing planned out. All you got to do is walk. Even, even if you fall, get up. All you got to do is walk. Because in, in those I wills, he did say, I will what? Walk with you. So all I got to do is walk. You're not by yourself. The reason you think you're by yourself is because someone entered in. Unaware, mm -hmm. crept in unaware, you know what I'm saying? They snuck in unaware. You fell asleep at the gate. Mm -hmm. They got in. Mm -hmm. Psalms 91. Fifteen three, come on! I know it sure was good though, wasn't it? It fit just that, it just fit right on in. Uh, Psalms ninety one. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my Elohim, and Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. Sound familiar to Matthew 23, don't you? Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, those that killeth the prophets. How I would love to be like a hen and gather you unto myself, like a chick up with, 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 with chicks under her wings. But you would not. And in the front of your book, Elohim hovered over the waters like a mama eagle over her nest. But this is something known amongst the saints, this concept. 
that there's safety and protection under his wings. It's not nothing new. Mm -hmm. And you look at this. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Hallelujah. They told you to do what? To have your stand up on your feet. Stand up like a man and what? Have your loins girt about with what? Truth. Hallelujah. Is that not book? So they know. But you know, we're in the era of sagging. Uh -oh. Huh? Now sweet sagging because people sagging in tight pants. At least me and Aaron's Aaron, it was it was baggy. I did have a belt on. Huh? Now it's tight pants sagging. Book said, stand up like a man. Have your loins girt about with truth. Verse 5, thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Right? And you know why? Because you're under the protection of these wings. A thousand fall, and ten thousand fall, and they're not going to come close to you. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, the habitation. Thou shalt not evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. See, look at this powerful psalm. This is what Hasatan used. One, he said, go ahead and jump. Because you, know you, you know what the scriptures say. If you are him, the angels will have charge over you. You won't even dash your foot against a stone. Mm. Thou shalt bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Is that not what he said to him? Yes, it is. That's exactly what he said to him. Wasn't it? Mm. That's why, look, so many, look, we just got to be careful now. Folks out here think they going hard in his word and, and doing all the look, man. Be very, very, I saw him be very, very careful. You go off on somebody in the woods, you better be careful. That's all, that's all I can say. Because the devil been playing this game for a long time. Yeah. Long time. Now, when it comes to battling Yah, all right, he's defeated. Mm -hmm. When it comes to man, well, he got some victories. Mm -hmm. He got some victories now. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon. Thou shalt trample under feet. Sorry. We're going to do... Uh, we're going to do this together. We're going to look at this. Well, I say it together, but uh, verse 14 on the screen. Uh, because he has set his love upon who? Me. Therefore, will I deliver him. So think, think of yourself. Think of yourself. Think of Yah talking to you. I will set him on high. He's going to set you on high. Because he has known my name. Big right here. He shall call upon me. And I will answer him. Mm. When you cry out. Like, right? Can't nobody take that away from me. Yeah. Cried out about my mama. Huh? Prayer line, cried out. He answered. When? That day. Couldn't even finish work that day. Cried out, called out. He he stepped in. Amen. Can't, can't, can't take that away from me. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him. He's talking about you. If you're under his wings, I will deliver him and honor him. Here the kicker. With long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. So the disciples and the apostles trying to get you to stand. Matthew 23. Matthew 23, 1 through 3. Then spake Yahshua to the multitude of his disciples, saying, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. 
All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe and observe and do, but do not after their works, for they say and do not. Right? All therefore whatever they bid you observe, that observe and do, mm -hmm. but do not after their works, mm -hmm. for they say and do not. Okay. Now, this is what I skipped, had to skip last week, and I want to get it this way. Exodus 25 and 19. And make one cherub on the one end and the other cherub on the other end. Mm -hmm. Even of the mercy seat shall ye make the cherubims on the two ends thereof, and the cherubims shall stretch forth their wings, that shall stretch forth their wings, that shall stretch forth their wings, covering the mercy seat with their wings. And their faces shall look one to another toward the mercy seat, shall the faces of the cherubims be, that shall put the mercy seat above upon the ark, and in the ark thou shalt put the testimony, all that I shall give thee, and there will I meet with thee, okay, and look at this, real important, I'm on the screen, and I will commune with who? You! I'm going to commune with you, where? Above the mercy seat. Above the mercy seat, yes. in between the cherubim, yes, sir. on their wings. I'm going to meet with you. I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims, which are upon the ark of the testimony of all things, which I will give thee in commandment to the children of Israel. This is kind of a joke here. Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Okay? But highly weird. Okay? Lighten up the mood. But more seriously, okay, the Ark of the Covenant. The tablets are inside, the pot of manna, Aaron's, bod, Aaron's rod that blossomed, the cherubims, the wings. So I will meet with you right here. I will meet with you. I will talk with you. Something interesting. This is a, just a, uh, she can't see, but she can't see. I'm sorry. There, there, there's a, uh, 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 a replica of the tabernacle, okay? And you have your showbread, you got your menorah or the lampstand, you got your altar of incense, you have your veil, you have the Holy of Holies, you have the Ark of the Covenant behind the veil. So where will he say, I'll speak with you? In, in, right, in, right in, in between them wings, on top, in between, on top of the mercy seat, and the whole, I will commune with thee there. Okay, right. Does that make sense? This is the tabernacle. Okay. Uh, Second Peter. Almost done here. Second Peter. But this would have been too heavy for last week. Second Peter one. Second Peter, first chapter, verse twelve. Wherefore I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them. So you know them. You know, you know what this is. It's tabernacle, this description up here. And establish in the present truth. Yea, I think it's meet, as long as I am in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Yahshua HaMashiach hath showed me. So Yahshua showed him something. He's reminding the people. Okay? They had this understanding. We can tell by the way they write that there's another tabernacle for you. Mm -hmm. We read it earlier in Corinthians that there's one where? Your other tabernacles where? Mm -hmm. In the Shammai. Not made by hands. Mm -hmm. Right? Yahshua formed, uh, Yah, Yah formed Adam from the ground. Formed him. Took out a, a, a rib and formed Eve. Remember we talked about doing Sukkot. From what? Sukkahs to temples. So when Cephas is talking, Cephas has a, under, a good understanding. He's using the word, what? Tabernacle. Okay? Tabernacle. But if I'm talking to Paul, Paul Deep, eh? there's some deep, deep waters for you, Shaul. Some deep water with Shaul. Okay, 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. We're not going to read all of it. We're going to look at what he says. Shaul says, 
3, 16, 1 Corinthians. Know ye not that ye are the temple. You 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 are the temple of Elohim. And that spirit of Elohim dwelleth in you. So the tabernacle was something that would get picked up. They tear it down, move on. Break camp, set it back up. Breaking camp, tear it back up, load up, move on with the temple. Was state it was permanent. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Mm -hmm. So, when you talk to Shaul on this topic, it's not just about being a tabernacle. Mm -hmm. He takes it a notch farther. You're a temple. Amen. You're a temple. Mm -hmm. You're a temple. Revelation uh, 11 and 19, it reads, And the temple of God was opened in heaven. And the temple of God was opened in heaven. So in the Shema'in, the temple of God. And as on earth, as in heaven. Mm -hmm. As in heaven, as on earth. Mm -hmm. So Shaul is like, oh, 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 oh. You're a temple of Elohim. Temple, step right there. People come to the temple. Tabernacle, break it down. Unloose the locks and nuts and bolts and load up. And you guys carry this and you guys carry that. And we're going that way till we stop. But not the temple. People are drawn unto you. So Shaul is like, you are a temple. You are a temple. Mm -hmm. That's tough for people to to fathom, okay? You know why? Because this is what some of us think about your temple. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Broken, broken down, beat up, abandoned. Arabs come in, spend five hundred dollars, buy the whole place. Mm -hmm. You don't think that, but everybody in the book think that. But your mind think this. Mm hmm. hmm? Y'all say this, you believe that. Yeah. Hmm? Righteousness, hope, future is this. This is all, man, this is all I know. Mm. So when we talk, when we look at this uh, temple, go back in, when we look at this temple, really quick um, he said about the Ark of the Covenant I will commune with you here so when we have things that are not like him right? who are you talking to in there mm -hmm. Help me. who are you talking to okay because this is you so who are you talking to on the side of the veil mm -hmm. I forgot to do it but you know there's a Hebrew word for lock that also means veil hair lock means veil so who are you talking to in here who are, you, who are you communing with in here? Because he said, I'm going to commune with you here. But you know what? You got your veil wide open. You ain't been eating no bread. Ain't no oil, no lights. You ain't, you know, you ain't got no aroma about yourself. You ain't guarding the tabernacle. You're not, you're not guarding the front door. You know what? A thief and a, a, thief and a robber can come in. Because you know what they won't do? They won't come in through the front door. They'll climb up some other way. So who are you talking to? Hmm? Hmm? They want this. You see that. Mm. The poor are part of the country of Elohim and have a part. Mm. Philippians 2 and 5. Can somebody give me Jeremiah 15 and 1? I'm sorry. Can somebody give me Philippians 4, 7 through 9? Can somebody give me Jeremiah 15 and 1? I'll read Philippians 2 and 5. You just put these scriptures in your notes about to wrap it up. Jeremiah. I'll take Philippians uh, 4. 4. What's Jeremiah? Jeremiah 15 and 1. I'll get that. Ephesians. Ephesians. I'm sorry. Not Ephesians. Philippians. Thank you. Thank you. She said 2 and 5 for you, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I said thank you. Uh, 
Philippians 2 and 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Mashiach. Mm -hmm. So you know that there were some things, some focus on his mind. His temperament. The temperament. That I, there are certain things that I will not forget, not cut loose, cannot let go before I will. These, are, these things that are ingrained and it's so serious that though I come into the city and I am extremely sorrowful, I'm crying. I have no problem of being becoming very irritated and getting a whip. And then a little bit later tell you that I wish I, I want to be a mama chicken to you and spread my wings out for you. But you don't want it. Therefore, your house is left desolate. Because you're communing with somebody else behind that veil. You ain't communing with me. Thieves and robbers come in, tear up all your stuff. Your house is left until you're desolate. Does that make sense? You got to have a mind like him. It's where we got Jeremiah 15 and 1. Then the Lord said to me, even if Moses and Samuel stood before me, my mind would not be favorable, favorable towards this people. Cast them out of my sight and let them go forth. Cast them what? Out of my sight. He said, read, read it again. Yes, then the Lord said to me, uh -huh. even if Moses and Samuel stood before me. So if Moses and Samuel stood before him, mm -hmm. go ahead. My mind would not be favorable. My what now? My mind. My mind. Would not be favorable. So his mind made up. Yes. Go ahead. Towards this people. Uh-huh. Cast them out of my sight. Mm -hmm. And let them go forth. Mm. So is that not what y'all should that your house will be left you desolate? Yes. I want to do this, mm -hmm. but you ain't going to let it happen. Mm -hmm. Therefore, your house will be destroyed. Mm -hmm. So that's why the greater picture, the bigger picture of Yah. That you're a lively stone. Yes. That refuse to hold their peace. Mm -hmm. He gonna build a spiritual house. Mm -hmm. He gonna build a spiritual house. We have got Philippians 4 and 7. Through 9. Philippians 4 and 7. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally brethren. Whatever things are true. Whatever things are noble. Mm -hmm. Whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, mm -hmm. whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate oh, on these yeah. things. Do what? Meditate, meditate on these things. One more time. Meditate. Meditate, meditate on these things. On these things. things. Mm. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw me. Mm. Saw in me. These do, and the God of peace will be with you. Hallelujah. So if, if we're with those who are without, mm. and if you're carrying, right, quote, unquote, the ark with you. Because when David was talking about the wings, he talked about the ark. What was David known for? Praise. Praise. And he had that ark right there. And you know what? David loved it so much. Unfortunately, a brother died, right? Mm -hmm. Then a man died mm -hmm. under David's watch. Because David didn't have the right, he didn't have the Levites, and he didn't have things in order. But the ark, so when Psalms 91 said, hey man, 10,000 falling at your side. You won't believe this. But when the children of Israel marched around Jericho, you won't believe what they had out there. The ark. The ark of the covenant was with them. And you won't believe it. The walls fell. Mm -hmm. They went through the they went through the pride. And you won't believe it. They destroyed all them folks. So while they're marching around with this tabernacle, they got the ark with them. Do we have do we have Yahshua within us like that? Hmm? So David talking about, he talking about under the shadow of the wings. He talking about, he was literally looking at the ark. He's like, man, if I just be up under the shadow, I'm, I'm super straight. Mm. If I'm under the shadow of this, because I can't touch it. Mm. Right? But we know that in Colossians, that is what the, uh, 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 the, the, the Christ is the substance of the shadow, mm. which is to come. If somebody can give me uh, Mark 14 and 7, and then uh, Deuteronomy 15 and 11. 
Somebody can get Deuteronomy. Okay, 15 and 11. Somebody can give me Isaiah 66 and 2. Then Matthew 5 and 3. So Mark 14, 17. Mark 14, 17. Deuteronomy 15 and 11. Isaiah 66 and 2. Matthew 5 and 3. And I'm going to close this out with Matthew 6. Mm -hmm. Isaiah. So whoever has Mark 14 and 7, go ahead. And in the evening he came with his twelve. Mark 14 and 7. Oh, I thought you said 17. Mm -hmm. For we have the poor with you always, and whensoever, whensoever you will, whensoever you will, you may do the, them good. But me, but me, ye have not always. So the poor is all. So this, so this, so Yah already has a plan for the poor. Mm -hmm. You're part of the plan. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're part. You're part of. You're part of construct. All right. Deuteronomy fifteen and eleven. Whoever got it. Deuteronomy fifteen and eleven. For the poor will never cease from the land. Therefore, I command you, saying, You shall open your hand wide to your brother. To your poor and your needy in your land. Mm. The poor, he said, they will never cease. Yeah, mm. poor will never cease in the land. So you're, we're supposed to, as I think it was in First Second Thessalonians, about you're supposed to support the weak, mm. comfort them, edify them. Mm. Just check it. Isaiah sixty six. Isaiah sixty six and two. Mm -hmm. And all these my hand has made, and all these that exist declares Yah. Mm. Yet to such a one I look, and on him who is poor and bruised of spirit, mm. and who trembles at my word. Who's poor and bruised of spirit. Mm -hmm. Did it say poor and have a bad checkbook? Maybe. Poor and got a couple bad breaks. Mm -hmm. Poor and ain't got a home. Mm -hmm. It said poor and of a bruised, bruised spirit. spirit. So it's one thing to be, be in poverty and poor. Okay. The brethren are supposed to come together for that. But those who are poor of the Ruach. Mm. Yes. Mm. So you're walking around as a tabernacle, i.e. temple, mm -hmm. a tabernacle future temple, mm -hmm. harboring something with the magnitude of the Ark of the Covenant causing thousands to fall. Mm. Well, you can commune with him behind the veil that you're supposed to be able to have bread for them because there's always bread on your table. Mm. There's always bread on your table. Mm. And this bread is good for their soul. Oh, yeah. That bread is good for their soul. So he ain't worried about pores and money. Mm. If you got a broken spirit, mm. 